bought my first book of poetry here when I was 16. <coughs> it's around the corner, actually. The collected poems of Dylan Thomas. <laughs> Still have it. <coughs> I'm going to read from a certain slant of sunlight and um, uh, and then the last poem. Poem. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for I am a lot more insane than this valley. <laughs> You'll do good if you play it like you're not getting paid. You should do it better if motherfuckers pay you. <laughs> Motto of the Whores and Poets Guild, translated from the Palatine Anthology by Alice Notley and Ted Berrigan, 20 Feb 82. A certain slant of sunlight. In Africa, the wine is cheap, and it is on St. Mark's Place, too, beneath a white moon. I'll go there tomorrow, the dark fog hooded against what is hurled down at me in my no hat, which is weather. The tall, pretty girl in the print dress under the fur collar of her cloth coat will be standing by the wire fence where the wild flowers grow, not too tall. Her eyes will be deep brown. Her hair styled 1941 American will be too. I will be shattered by then. But now I'm not and can also picture white clouds, impossibly high, in blue sky over a small boy, heartbroken, to be dressed in black knickers, black coat, white shirt, buster brown collar, flowing black bow tie. Her hand lightly fallen on his shoulder, faded sunlight, falling across the picture. Mother and son. 33 and 7. First communion day in 1941. I'll go out for a drink with one of my demons tonight. They are dry in Colorado, 1980 spring snow. People who change their names. Abraham and Sarah. Naomi, call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Simon, who shall be called Peter. <laughs> Saint Paul, formerly Saul. Joseph of Arimathea. Cain. I once heard him say he didn't know if Cain actually changed his name, but he assumed he did. <laughs> Libby Notley. When I was six, I found out my real name was Alice. Francis Russell O'Hara. Dee Dee Susan W. Ron Patchett. Dick Gallup. Steve Carey. <laughs> Kenneth Coke, formerly J. Kenneth Coke. Jackson Pollock. Renee Rilke. William Carlos Williams. My mother, Peg. Guillaume Apollinaire, Joe Liebling, John Kerouac, Joe Howard Brainerd, Babe Ruth, Tom Clark, Anselm Hollow, Clark Coolidge, George and Katie Schneem, Samuel R. Chip Delaney. In the land of pygmies and giants, Anselm, Edmund, Get me an ashtray. No one in this house in any way is any longer sick. And I am the Lord and owner of their faces. They call me Dad. <laughs> Angst. Or is that angst? Angst. angst. <laughs> I had angst. <laughs> Blue Herring. Fiction appears. 
for I and only one person's eyes. In my more iconoclastic moments, I stifle the impulse to send such poems, which I do come across them, back to their authors, taking same authors to task for presuming too much and asking them to send their poem right on to the faceless, as if you hands were innocent and the lobster is in your groin and the heart of the scarecrow opens like snow and something in the branches makes the pigeons spread their wings. You reach into the branches and grab the red herrings. The fountain of youth is uncharted. You are its overflowing outline. You can only laugh. Ode. Spring banged me up a bit and bruised and ruddy and devastatingly attractive. I made 2 a.m. phone call to Bill Brown. How long is your foot? Oh, about 12 inches. I'll stick it up your ass. <laughs> and day rang from pool to hilltop like a bell. Dinner at George and Katie Schneemann's. She was pretty swacked by the time she put the spaghetti and meatballs into the orgy pasta bowl. <laughs> there was mixed salt and pepper in the titty tweet pasta bowl. We drank some Vago red from glazed girly demi tasse cups, after which we engaged in heterosexual intercourse, mutual masturbation, fellatio, and cunnilingus. <laughs> For dessert, we stared at a cupboard full of art critic friends, scruffy toad, and two underglazes on vases. We did have a very nice time. <laughs> Mutiny. The admirals brushed the dandruff off their epaulets and steamed on the HMS Hesper towards Argentina. I like doggies on their little feet, don't you? I said, but they kept rolling over beneath the tracer bullets and the Antarctic moon, beneath the daunting missiles and the prince and his helicopter. They were steaming towards interesting places to meet interesting people and kill them. They were at sea and it was also beneath them. Tough cookies. You took a wrong turn in 1938. Don't worry about it. The sun shines brightest when the others are sleeping. There is a bris in your immediate future. Take heart. Shakespeare was probably an asshole too. Your life is rare and precious and it has no mud. Stay with it. You have strange friends, but they are going to be strangers. <laughs> Everything is Maya, but you will never know it. Your gaiety is not cowardice, but it may be hepatitis. <laughs> Give them back, who never were. I am lonesome after my own kind. The hussy Irish barmaid, the Yankee drunk who was once a horse park doctor's son, and who still is for that matter, the shining Catholic schoolboy face and serious glasses, the proper trim of hair bent over a text by Pere Vidal, and already you can see a rakish quality of intellect there. Geraldine Wicker, who played nurse in My Hearts in the Highlands on the Pills, and who eventually married whom? The fat kid from Oregon, who grew up to be our only real poet, and the jaunty Jamaica Queen stick figure, ex-US Navy, former French Negro poet, to whom Frank O'Hara once wrote an ode, or meant to, before everything died, Fire Island, New York.
the summer 1966. Via Air. Honey, I wish you were here. I wrote some poems about it. I know it goes and it's going. It will never leave us. And this is the last one. This will be her shining hour. <coughs> This movie has Fred Astaire and Robert Ryan in it. He got off the train. I have a feeling this is an unknown movie. Laughs. Q. What the hell is going on? A. Laughing. Dialogue. This movie has no plot. Fred Astaire was on this train with a whole lot of soldiers going to Japan. And then he got off the train. Robert Ryan keeps saying, let's kill Japs. And Fred Astaire keeps saying, fuck that. <laughs> you fell in love with her. Q. Who? A. Joan Leslie. She's a photographer. There keeps being a whole lot of stuff by Johnny Mercer. Q. Joan Leslie is just my type. Is she? A. Uh-huh. Fred Astaire is nobody's type either. Laughing. He changed all the lyrics. Q. To what? A. Sings. This will be my shining hour, drinking rum and Bacardi. Like the face of Misha Hour on the beauty shop marquee. Laughs. You have to watch it. You have no right to get anything out of my evening. Q. Give me the book review section, will you? A. Sure. You'll love it. I haven't written anything for years. I'm going to move away. Oh, God. She's gorgeous. For a little ugly person. I can't tell which is Waldo. Keep the line, huh? I can't tell which is Waldo. <laughs> You. Did you write that down? A. No. <laughs> Laughs. You? Working? Laughs again. Laughs. This is my wife. She follows me around. Q. Where are they? A. They're in some giant building. Fred Astaire is yelling, help! Save me! I think this movie is some homage to Balanchine. It's out of the question. Man, instead of cracking an egg on that woman's hand, they're putting diamonds on it. I think my life is really awful. Oh God, write all this down. Oh, what a great song. This is my night at the canteen. It's nice work if you can. Oh great. She's dancing. They're in New York City. Of course they are, just like us. Oh God, he's so great. Oh, he just got taken down from the table. He did a snake dance. It was a Johnny Mercer snake dance. It's 4 a.m. Laughs. Wordsworth put it pretty well. <laughs> he hasn't done too much in this one. Now he's going to do it. It's all so wartime. It's so wartime, no one gets to do much of anything. It's all so unfair. Are you having fun? You are too, sigh. That's Robert Ryan. You should come see him. He's being in a musical. Oh God, he looks so great. He looks too much like my father. It has Avril Harriman in it. Doesn't everything? <laughs> Have you ever said to her how your life would be incomplete without her? Setting, Beekman Place, the usual penthouse. It's almost summer. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen a movie in 10 years. Oh God, I'm seeing double. You're the one he'll never forget. Will you keep it on while I get in bed? What? Can you keep it on while I get in bed? Sure. Their lives are as fragile as a glass menagerie. Saturday night on TV. Oh, she dances, Ted, and it's so great. She's not supposed to be able to dance. You're making a big mistake writing a poem and now watching this. Shut up. I'm getting the last lines. You are not. <laughs>